NASA never returned to the moon, and this is why. NASA accomplished a feat that was literally out of this world when it put the first humans on the moon on July 20th, 1969. With the entire world holding its collective breath. That was more than 53 years ago. Later, on December 19th, 1972, the final NASA moon mission was conducted. Even while technology has advanced and public awareness has grown, NASA has not sent another person to the moon in close to 50 years. NASA has failed to repeat the achievements of the 1970s. What took place? In this video, we investigate the underlying cause of NASA's inability to send further people to the moon in recent years. The moon is one of Earth's nearest neighbors. On the cosmic scale, however, the distance is around 384,400 kilometers. If you could drive at 40 miles per hour, it would take you roughly 6,000 hours to reach the moon. However, astronauts arrive there more quickly. Since NASA must obviously exercise caution, crewed missions to the moon take longer than uncrewed ones. The nine rudimentary NASA flights to the moon, including Apollo 8, Apollo 10, and Apollo 13, as well as the six that actually touched down on the lunar surface, required slightly over 78 hours, or three days and six hours, to reach a lunar orbit. Apollo 8 was the quickest mission, finishing in two days, 21 hours and eight minutes. Apollo 17 took the longest, finishing in three days, 14 hours and 41 minutes. Humans are so attracted to the moon that we have dared to send some of us over the impossibly far distance to investigate. Have you ever wondered where the moon originated from? When you were staring at it at night? You can choose from any of the various origin ideas for the Earth's satellite. According to the Big Impact Theory, an early object collided with Earth and created the moon. The remnant cloud of gas and dust around the young sun is where Earth originated. There were many bodies generated in the early solar system that never developed into full planets because it was a tumultuous environment. Pluto is one of these bodies that may come to mind as an example, but one of these slammed into Earth. Whatever its origins, the U.S. was interested in sending people to the moon by the early 1960s. On May 25, 1961, President J.F. Kennedy addressed a special joint session of Congress with a call to action, which marked the official beginning of the campaign. A discussion of the space race between the Soviet Union and the United States, however, is necessary to fully understand the history of NASA's lunar missions. Prior to Kennedy's speech, Russia had sent Yuri Gagarin into orbit around the Earth in a spacecraft, securing his status as the first person in space. Kennedy's moon mission, known as the Apollo mission, had a lot of support since the United States as a whole intended to take a step. In addition, NASA was prepared to carry out the first unmanned Apollo mission five years after the president's address. However, catastrophe followed the space agency's attempt to launch a human mission from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Center. Three astronauts perished in a fire that broke out. However, a resolve would not be stopped by that setback. The first manned flight, Apollo 7, successfully orbited the Earth 18 months later and tested the majority of the complex equipment that would carry the astronauts to the moon. Although a lot of people can recall the precise Apollo mission that put humans on the moon for the first time, NASA had already flown a manned journey to the moon's far side. That was the Apollo 8 mission, which took place in March 1969 but didn't feature a landing. NASA dispatched three astronauts to orbit the moon in Apollo 10 in May of that year as a practice run for the major event that would occur two months later. There were two astronauts on board the Apollo 7 mission, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, the mission commander, who would go on to acquire global fame as the entire world watched as it launched from the Kennedy Space Center on July 16, 1969. The 76-hour mission ends with Apollo 11 entering lunar orbit. The lunar module Eagle, manned by Armstrong and Aldrin, parted ways with the command module, which Collins remained in. On July 19th, at 1.46 p.m., he refused to set foot on the moon. But at 4.17 p.m., two hours later, the eagle began to descend to the moon's surface. The module landed on the Sea of Tranquility's Armstrong outcrop in the southwest. One of the most famous radio transmissions ever made was the eagle had landed at 10.39 p.m., five hours ahead of schedule, and was promptly radioed to Mission Control in Houston, Texas. 
Apollo has landed. As he descended the lunar module's ladder, Armstrong unlocked the module's hatch. Hundreds of millions of people watched with eager expectation as a television camera linked to the craft captured his progress and transmitted the signal back to Earth. Armstrong spoke one of the most famous quotes, one little step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for man. At 10.56 p.m., as he downed the ladder and placed his foot on the moon's powdery surface. 19 minutes later, Aldrin joined him on the moon's surface, where they placed a U.S. flag and took pictures of the moon. By 1.11 a.m. on July 21st, this was followed by a couple of uncomplicated scientific experiments and a phone call from the president, Richard Nixon. After returning to the lander, both astronauts shut the hatch. Before returning back to the command module in the Eagle, the two men spent the night on the moon sleeping. At 12.50 a.m. on July 22nd, they collected samples and reconnected with Collins for the journey home, which was terminated by a splash in the Pacific Ocean. Aldrin and Armstrong were welcomed with a hero's cheer and immediately rose to fame. Before ending the moon landing program on December 14, 1972, NASA would replicate the moon landing five more times. Harrison Schmidt and Eugene Kernan of the Apollo 17 mission were the first two humans to set foot on the moon after NASA successfully landed a total of 12 people on the Earth's satellite. 20 Apollo missions were scheduled, but the final three were canceled. What exactly occurred next? After conquering the moon, the natural next step was to make a permanent home there. From there, NASA might develop further by establishing a fuel depot for sending spacecraft into deep space, assisting with the launch of large space telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope, preparing for manned missions to Mars, or even launching lunar tourism. However, NASA faced a number of obstacles. Although the effort was first fueled by a competitive mentality, the entire objective faced criticism. Not everyone in the launch vicinity was applauding the day Apollo 11 took flight. Ralph Abernathy, a prominent civil rights figure, assembled a group of 500 protesters, the most of whom were African Americans, outside the Kennedy Space Center entrance. They brought mules and a wooden wagon to emphasize the contrast between the dazzling white Saturn V rocket families and those who couldn't afford food or a suitable place to live. This was done a few days before the launch. In protest, Abernathy and his companions were present when NASA launched Armstrong and his fellow astronauts to the moon a year later. The Apollo space program in actuality polarized the American people, while one factor supported the objective and viewed it as a revitalizing and unifying endeavor, another factor saw it as a waste of money and an improper use of resources. The last group said that the funds may be better used to address socioeconomic issues facing American society. The debate centered on whether America should have invested $20 billion in the race to send the first humans to the moon, or whether it should have used that money and political capital to address the multitude of global issues that plagued the planet, such as racial discrimination, pollution, and gender inequality. At that time, Abernathy visited with the NASA administrator. In fairness, NASA sought to keep the promises made to Abernathy by Thomas Paine, who asked for funding for the effort to fight the country's poverty, starvation, and other social issues. Paine agreed to do so. After Armstrong and his crew returned to Earth, nearly 500,000 young people traveled in the caravan by hitchhiking and walking through gridlocked traffic to the upstate New York Woodstock Music Festival, where they danced in the rain and mud to songs that denounced the nation, particularly for its participation in the Vietnam War. Currently, has the plot changed? No, is the response. Lunar exploration continues to draw only lukewarm public attention. Only 53% of Americans stated they thought the Apollo program was worthwhile when it was at its height. The majority of the other time, American support for the Apollo missions was below 50%. More recently, more than 57% of respondents from across the country to an insider poll agreed that NASA should return to the moon. 
Only approximately 38% of respondents thought NASA should return breathing, living beings. Others who support U.S. moon landings claim that robots could carry out lunar exploration. However, it's noteworthy to note that Americans are not entirely opposed to primitive space missions. 63% of respondents thought NASA should prioritize putting astronauts on Mars. This implies that Elon Musk might not have trouble recruiting voluntary colonists for his plan to settle on Mars. However, according to 91, NASA should concentrate on searching the sky for deadly asteroids. The funding of space missions, especially when oil is so expensive, was a big issue for NASA. The inability to take risks while dealing with human life makes missions extremely difficult. So that's it, folks. Support this YouTuber by subscribing to the channel, hitting the like button, and clicking that notification bell for more uploads. Thanks for watching.